the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. So, another one comes to an end. It's important for us to, to look at our lives and I think have particular benchmarks. And there is no better benchmark than having a time where we can assess. Assessment at this time of the year in particular is important. Not because 31st of December is very different to the 1st of January. They're all days. And it was St. Anthony who always told his disciples to you know, live every day as if it were the last. It sounds really morbid, yeah, but it's, it's not. It's only morbid if we're holding on to this world. It's only morbid if this is what we want. It's only morbid if this is the end. But if this is a means to an end, then it takes us in a very different direction. If we understand that this is a step, and that step leads us to a knowledge, a greater knowledge of who we are and where we're going and why we're going there, then that step is significant. So the end of the year becomes a time when I can tally. Because it's a parcel of time. You know, whether it's end of the year, whether it's your birthday, whether it's the Coptic New Year, whether it's anything, it's always a great excuse to do a stock take to stop, to assess, and then to plan ahead and see where you're going. So I suppose if we're going to look at our lives at this stage, there's, there's a great passage from the book of, of Sirah, chapter 2, that says, My child, when you come to serve the Lord, prepare yourself for trials. Accept whatever happens to you. In periods of humiliation, be patient. Now, what's I got to do with my life today? This life is full of so many challenges, so many obstacles. And I think in the culture we live in now, the life we live in, the time we spend, we have a certain sense of entitlement. We are entitled to be healthy, wealthy, happy, satisfied, that's the entitlement we have. And if any of those things don't work, if any of those are slightly out of sync, then I feel like God's been harsh to me, He doesn't understand me, He's not as generous as I thought, He's not as loving as I thought, He doesn't know me, and so on and so forth. You know, we get into those spirals <clears throat> where we convince ourselves that because we don't receive the things that we think we are entitled to, then God doesn't love us, or doesn't know us, or is not compassionate, or doesn't look at us, or doesn't see us. Surely the first indication of God's love for me is that I exist. I'm here. Secondly, I'm here as His creation. I'm here as His son, as His daughter. With His image and His likeness, He didn't treat me as something subliminal to him, a lesser creature. Of course the difference is I'm human, I'm limited. He is the unlimited, omnipotent God. But for me, <clears throat> he's given me as much as he can in his image and his likeness. But still, just as he experienced difficulties in his life, just as he experienced pain, disappointment, just as he was humiliated, just as he was betrayed, we're going to feel those things. So the important thing is to look at last year and look at the negatives as part of our journey, not obstacles in our journey. You know, imagine if you're walking along a path and you have big stones in the path, right? You could if you wanted to, decide as you're walking 
to continue to trip along each one of them. It's there, it's an obstacle, and you get a trip. Or you can look at it for maybe what it is, what it should be, and you use it as stepping stones to get to the end of the path. Sometimes those difficulties and those challenges are stepping stones for us. <clears throat> They're stepping stones in that they mark out a path and we overcome them by stepping on them. Not by tripping over them, not by being stopped by them, not by being intimidated by them, but by actually using them as part of my journey. There's an expression in Arabic when you're going through difficulties, it says, you know, it makes your bones stronger. Right? It just gives you strength, it makes you more robust, it makes you less fragile. And that's precisely <clears throat> what we're reading in this passage. When you prepare to serve the Lord, when you're preparing for this journey, when you're preparing to do what it is that you need to do, you will find those things. So look at that in terms of last year, but also prepare yourself with that mindset for the new year. Am I preparing myself for this rosy, smooth, paved path that once I get on it, realize that that's not the case, it's not the reality, and become very disappointed and disheartened? Or do I say, Lord, here I am, use me. I am preparing to serve you. So whatever comes my way this year and every day of my life, whatever comes my way, I am going to use as a stepping stone. I'm not going to let it get the best of me. I'm not going to let it defeat me. You know, it's tragic that just last week we saw 25 innocent people many women and children, die in a church where they went to pray, they went to worship, and they died through an act of terrorism. Many were asking me, so if you've got Christmas and New Year and the Nativity coming up, are your churches going to be functioning? Are you going to be able to continue to pray? Are you going to have services? And my answer was always, of course we are. Of course we are. Because these things that we go through, these obstacles, are meant by Satan to stop us. They are meant to slow us down. They're meant to make me look at my faith and think, Lord, if you are a gracious God, if you're a loving God, how can you possibly agree to this? How can you let this happen? Whereas, I could also be thinking, Lord, I'm here to serve you. Those people are here to serve you. We are going to face tribulations. We are going to be hated by some for your name's sake. We are going to find tribulation. Those will sometimes find us who want to kill us to say that they are offering a service to God. That's all in Scripture. But then we go on to say, Lord, let it be your will, not mine. I want to learn from their lives. I want to learn from their resilience. I want to learn from the power that is visible in your saints throughout history. You now I remember um, at the bombing of the church in Alexandria of New Year's Eve of 2011, we had one of our young men here visiting his family. And I made contact and said, you know, what did you do? He said, well, we met in our lounge room, we prayed together, we hugged as if it was possibly the last time we were going to meet, then we went to church. And they came back from church. And they still go to church. Stepping stones. 
Stories like that, examples like that, strength like that, it's all an encouragement for us. And that's what we've seen throughout Christian history throughout. The Epistle to the Colossians, chapter 3, verse 23 says, Whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. When you start this year, when you're preparing yourself for this path, put in your minds that this year is the Lord's, not mine. It's not for me, it's not for other people, it's not for my family, it's not for my boss, it's not for my community. Those come second, third, fourth, tenth, hundredth. But first and foremost, this year is for God. It's His. Lord, you have given us and we are returning it to you. Lord, this time I have is a gift from you. Every moment, every moment as I wake, that is a moment that is a gift from you and you alone. Lord, every time I wake up in the morning, I realize that this is an extra day in my life that is given to me by you. And I'm thankful for it. And I bless you for it. And I give it back to you. Because when we go into life, when we go into this year or anything we do, and say that this is to the Lord, for the Lord, of the Lord, I deal with it very differently. You know, if, if someone entrusts you with something that's precious, you look after it. Sometimes if it's yours, you can be a little bit less caring, less conscientious, less conscious, less careful. It's mine. It's mine. I, I do what I want with it. If it breaks, fine, it's my responsibility. But if I'm holding on to something that is precious for somebody else, Surely that commitment is different. This coming year is precious. It is precious to God because it is He who has given it to you. And it is precious to you because it is a gift from God. <clears throat> we take privileges. We feel entitled. Of course I'm going to be alive this year. You know what, I know some people who aren't alive this year. They're not alive anymore. Now, that's not a morbid thought, that's just the nature of life. Our nature, our norm, is actually to die, not to live. Our our bodies break down on a daily basis. Cells die, and then they rejuvenate. That's the, that's the miracle. The norm is that our life ends. The miracle is that it is kept. But the beauty of that miracle is that it also comes to an end because there's no longevity in our existence here. It's interesting, you, you have a cycle of, you know, when you're born, you're a child and everything satisfies you. And then you get a bit older and some things satisfy you and you become a bit more selective. Then you get a bit older and your attention span decreases and you want quicker, sharper things and less satisfies you. Then you get older still and then more satisfies you because you become more satisfied by small daily meaningful things. And then you get older still and the days get longer. You get older still and you lose patience again. And so we're constantly going up and down of being satisfied and dissatisfied, satisfied and dissatisfied. And you know I've seen people who live their whole lives very satisfied because they have that godly appreciation about them. It doesn't matter whether they're 7 or 77. 
they have a realization that this life is not theirs, it's God's. And so they both appreciate it and value it and cherish it, but then they also do their best to honor it and value it. They do their best to be faithful in it. Even at difficult times, there was one person in particular I knew who the one word, or two words, that would be constantly reiterated is, thank God. No matter what the question was, no matter what the situation was, how are you feeling? Thank God. That's not what I'm asking. Are you well? Thank God. But that's not what I'm asking. That's not the answer to my question. And then, as you know the person more and more, you realize, well, actually, it is the answer to the question. We say it in the prayer of thanksgiving every day. We thank you, Lord, on every occasion, in every condition, for all things. How can you be thankful for, for illness? Because it's been given to me. Because I know that everything I have is either from God's hand or by His permission. Either from His hand directly or by His permission. If it's from His hand directly, it must be good. And if it's by His permission, it can't harm me. Because God will never let anything harm me. He will never let the temptation exceed my ability to overcome it. Otherwise, it will overcome me. And that's not the gracious, loving, generous, fair God we know. That God, our Father, is the one who not only cared for us and created us, but in the fullness of time came down and looked like us to re-establish us, to reconcile us. And that's what I want us, <clears throat> you and me included, to go into this coming year with. Lord, from the beginning of this year, I want to thank you on every occasion, in every condition, for all things. You know, someone walking past outside, or even some of you here would look at me and think, are you insane? How do I thank God for, for difficulties and calamities and disasters? You know, at the end of the day, this is his world, not mine. I just live here. And because I just live here, I am subject to the limited nature of my humanity. But I know that my God is an exceedingly compassionate God. He is a loving God. He is a God of abundance. He is a generous God. So He's never going to withhold anything from me if it's for my good. And whatever he gives me is for my good. Whatever he permits me to have is for my good. Imagine if we remained infants for our whole lives. Imagine if we never went through growing pains. Imagine if you never went through teething. Imagine if you never had to sit an exam or qualify for anything. Or go to a job interview. Imagine you never had any of these hurdles. Where would we be? We'd be 40, 50, 60 year old infants. Who haven't grown, who haven't developed. You know, it puts a whole new meaning to this whole no pain, no gain saying we're here in the world. And, and there's a lot of wisdom in that. There is no step that is guaranteed. 
I don't know of anyone, maybe you do, but I don't know of anyone who has taken a journey through life and has never ever had any pain. Whether it's pain of failure, pain of loss, pain of dissatisfaction, pain of loneliness, pain of too many people around, pain of having too much. You know, whatever it is, there's always that sense of something. But that, those pains that we experience are not all bad. Sometimes they just mean we're growing up. <clears throat> Do we take responsibility for our lives? So if we read 1 Corinthians 9.17, for if I do this willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, what then? There's no reward. Are we taking our lives willingly? Are we taking those steps willingly? Or is everything begrudging? Is everything with sensitivity? Is everything with complaint? Lord, these obstacles along my way, these stones, I'm going to continue to use them as stepping stones. But if I stand at the middle of, at the, middle of the path and look at them and say, look, this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, where do I go? How do I deal with this obstacle, and that obstacle, and that obstacle? And I become afraid of them. And they stop my journey. Don't forget, the cross was a stepping was one of these stepping stones. The betrayal of Judas was one of these stepping stones. The arrest of our Lord was one of these stepping stones. All of them were. So our Lord is on his journey. He's sitting with his disciples. One dips his bread with him. Stepping stone. Then he goes out and he prays. And as he's praying, his disciples go to sleep. And when they come back together, the soldiers come. Stepping stone. His disciples run and betray him and abandon him. Stepping stone. Arrested. Stepping stone. Tried. Stepping stone. Crowned with thorns, stepping stone. Crucified, stepping stone. Buried, stepping stone. Risen, destination. That's how our lives are. A series of stepping stones. Some that are firm and easy to step on, Others that are a bit higher and a bit slippery and they need more care, they need to be negotiated properly. Others where I need more strength. Others where I need to be more attentive. Others where I need some, uh, someone needs to hold my hand while I'm stepping on them, just to give me a bit of stability. And so on and so forth. But none of them can stop my journey. None of them can get in the way of my destination unless I allow them, unless I give in. But I suppose this journey needs strength, but it also needs another very important component, one that we're not always so good at. Epistle to the Philippians, chapter 2, verse 8 says, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient. Humility and obedience are not things we find, they're not things we find simple. They're sometimes not even achievable because we think that they are weakness. To be humble doesn't mean to be weak. To be humble means to know your strength, but put it aside. 
That's what humility is. You see, someone who has nothing can't really be humble. Someone who has humble sees glory, has glory, and puts it aside. And so we get the epitome of this humility in our God Himself, who left His kingdom, took flesh, and dwelt among us, and made Himself of no reputation, humbling Himself, and becoming obedient. Obedient to nature, obedient to growth, obedient to hunger, obedient to cold and heat. Obedient to human frailty because he was fully man while being fully God. Obedient to treachery. Obedient to the abuse of power. Obedient to corruption around him. But he knew that all of this was a means to an end. He put his power aside, he put his glory aside, and he accepted all of those things. So during this year that's coming, let's also look at what it means for us to be humble and obedient. And what that means sometimes is to listen to the voice of God very early on. Whether it's through my own readings, whether it's through my confession follow, whether it's through my spiritual guide, whether it's through direction, whether it's through what I know within myself, and put that aside. And to be humble in putting it aside. To know that I can be different. You know what? We can all be loud. We can all be aggressive. We can all be rude. Some better than others, of course. But it takes a certain humility and control to be obedient to the things that God has called us to be. To be meek and humble and loving and forgiving. So I think as we start this year, we need to realize, and I'm sorry if I've painted a really bad picture for you, People will say, start the year, be confident, be... but I want to say, no, actually, let's just be realistic. As we start this year, we're all going to have difficulties because it's part of life. And maybe sometimes because we start with this overly positive utopian idea that the minute we hit a glitch, it suddenly stops us in our tracks. So maybe what we need to do is realize that our journey is the same as every other journey. We're actually walking in the footsteps of our shepherd, who himself went through all of these things. Every difficulty, every obstacle becomes a stepping stone, one after the next. There'll be good steps as well, there'll be good times as well, there'll be satisfaction as well, there'll be joy as well, I'm not saying any of that. But that's the smooth road that we take for granted, because that's fine. But when we hit those spots that are tricky or challenging, we need to deal with them knowing that this year is His. That if I'm going to start this journey, I have to prepare myself so that these obstacles don't actually become obstacles, but they become a means to an end for me to give thanks, to give glory, and to overcome, and to reach the destination He has called me to reach, and the beauty He has prepared for me. And glory be to God forever. Amen.